okay now we'll try to put everything together and uh, try to uh, start developing a very simple application as an example so that we can try to consolidate with an example uh, all the uh, pieces all the uh, bricks that we've been uh, studying one by one hmm? uh, so the, the goal of this uh, is an exercise that will be split in two parts uh, in this first video we'll uh, develop the server part and then in the second video we'll uh, work on the client side of the application after we see the client side of rest apis which here is the the fetch um, classes in uh, in javascript on the browser side but uh, as we say today we will focus more on on building the rest api server uh, by uh, using the express uh, framework that we studied in the last video um, so the goal is to build a, a very simple uh, one page application and uh, uh, with the, say, the purpose uh, or just of, of testing or learning how to put together uh, the express uh, um, how to reason about a rest interface uh, and uh, maybe how to uh, store some data the backend data into a sqlite database mm -hmm. uh, so this part of the first part of the exercise will be on the server side technology and the next uh, the second part uh, Will be on the client side where uh, we'll see uh, of course the interaction with the dom and the html and also the fetch for interacting with that and in both parts we'll try to exploit the promises to have a cleaner code and uh, uh, exploit the asynchronicity of the behavior hmm. so what is the kind of application we are trying to build a very simple application where uh, basically uh, we want to have the list of the exam scores uh, of for the exam that we already gave at the Politecnico. Uh, so a list of uh, different exams uh, and uh, the score that we got and the date uh, at which uh, that exam was uh, was given. This is just a, a, a possible prototype of the of the user interface, nothing fancy. Uh, so once we display this, uh, if we click on the plus button, uh, the web page should uh, show a form in which we can uh, uh, specify the information of a new exam that we just gave uh, here at the Polytechnico. So, for example, we, we have a, a drop down menu here where we can select uh, uh, the, the exam that we want to uh, record the score for, the score, the numerical value of the score, and the date of the exam itself. Mm, so, the user can specify those fields of course you see the red here because they are not valid yet because they are uh, mandatory fields that are not being filled yet and then you have the cancel button for closing this uh, area and going back uh, to the list um, or the save button for uh, saving this information of course i want to fill this information with some new uh, new data new information here so you can select the course write in the score and select the date and then when i save uh, I will go to a new page where the, the new score has been recorded. Uh, there's some uh, something is not perfect yet. It was just a quick mock-up. Um, basically, the, right now it doesn't check whether an exam has been duplicated or not. We are just aiming at a very first uh, simple implementation so that you can build it. But basically, we can see the basic principle for for developing that. And of course, a website like that uh, should be able to record the list of courses, uh, especially all the courses need to be available to fill this drop down menu, and also the list of scores uh, for each courses for our user. Right now, we are only thinking about one user, okay? Uh, so we are not doing anything multi multi user or with logins or any, any fancy things, just from a very simple exercise. Um, the idea is that, of course, the data about the courses and the data about, about the, um, the, the exam scores uh, should be stored into a database hmm? because they should be persistent even if we restart the application server. Uh, so uh, it's always better if the, if the data are stored into some, some database. And uh, for example, I, I created a very simple database with two tables, course and exam. Uh, by using SQLite. Uh, if we want to interact with that, uh, I should have a, a window open with the SQLite browser. I'm sorry, it will not uh, increase the, the font size. It's not a very complete or fancy program, but we can see uh, we have a course table where uh, here we can see the list of the courses with the code for each of them. I just uploaded some of the, some of the first year courses 
the name and the number of credits so this is the first table that contains information about the courses it has a uh, three <coughs> columns called code name and CFU and the second uh, table called exam just as the code of the course and information about the exam uh, so it's uh, the date and the score uh, for each of them and also we have an ID column for for acting as a primary key of this table since the course code is not a, a suitable primary key for this table and so we have this uh, other second table exam so a very simple database and with sqlite is just stored into one file uh, that they call the exams.sqlite uh, that will be uh, available on the server side so basically uh, what we want to do as a first step is build a rest api for allowing a front-end application to uh, implement this functionality so for example in some way uh, the front end needs to show the list of the exams so the back end should provide uh, the list of the exams to the front end uh, the front end should um, uh, present the list of the courses and so the back end should offer an api a rest api for uh, getting the list of the courses the collection of the courses uh, the front end needs to save and to save uh, adding a new uh, exam with these three information the course the score and the date and so the, the, the backend API should offer a method for inserting a new, um, a new exam in this case. So in this case, we are uh, thinking about the data model and thinking about the operations that the front end will need to do with this data model. And then we will implement a front, um, an API REST inf interface uh, for offering this kind of, of, uh, of uh, services. Uh, right now we are trying to work uh, very simply just uh, on one uh, node project so that's how we are going to organize uh, our files it's not uh, for bigger problems uh, this kind of organization will not be uh, enough uh, we need something more complete uh, something more articulated probably will separate the server serving the front end from the server serving the apis but something for later to to study right now we just think about a very simple um, uh, organization of the files where the same express web server does a double duty on one hand the express server will uh, implement all the apis for of course the, the server side and we also host the client side uh, information so all the html and javascript files that are expected to run on the browser of course this part of files of client side uh, say documents uh, will not be um, uh, interpreted on the server they just will be just be served and shipped to the to the browser where they will be interpreted so in detail uh, let's say we have uh, our project in a, in a folder in a directory and inside this directory we have the, the primary files so server.js or uh, index.js uh, how we want to call it hmm? which the which is the server application express running on node so all of these documents are running on the node and when i think of node.js i'm thinking of the server side okay and uh, this main file can also of course uh, uh, use other helper files other modules hmm? uh in um, a file in node can import other modules uh, using the require syntax mm -hmm. just remember that most modules in node in the node ecosystems are compatible with the require um, module interfaces uh, and uh, um, and that's the native way of importing modules on the back end inside node so if I'm uh, de defining a server and I want to create other files uh, where I define classes, I define functions, uh, I define uh, uh, no, other uh, kind of uh, helper functions or objects, uh, I can do that and uh, I, can, I can simply import them from the main application uh, using the require statement. And by the way, I, of course, I can also uh, require uh, or import any other module that I want to install uh, through npm install command. Uh, and uh, and this will be visible by the express web server when they are stored into the node module subfolder of the main uh, of the main directory hmm? uh, so we can uh, npm install the models that, the modules that we need and then they will be available and in, available to to require to import to require all of this will run the, on the server side and all of these will be javascript 
only JavaScript. Okay? Then we have the client side. The client side is composed of uh, HTML uh, uh, files, uh, JavaScript files uh, that will run in the browser. Mm -hmm. And so we just need, uh, on, on our server, inside the extract, we just need to be able to take these files and ship them to the browser. And so we can put all of them in a single directory that will be marked as a static folder for Express. So Express will not try to interpret this file in any way. We just try to uh, publish it uh, on, a, on, on, the, on its uh, document tree. Uh, so if uh, I request index.html, it will load the client index.html file and will just uh, give it to the browser. And this main.javascript is the main file that will run inside the browser. So we can write here the JavaScript that is going to run on the browser. So just remember what we write in the main directory is code to, that is running, is going to run on the server side. What we write inside the client directory is code that will go, is going to run on the browser side. And now we can also um, uh, organize our program on many other files, uh, with more than one file. And uh, we, since we are in the browser, the mechanism for defining and importing modules is the import statement instead of require one, no? because we are in, uh, inside the browser. Uh, so we can create more than one file. Uh, the, the, Java, the, the HTML will uh, load the main.js with a script tag, and the main will uh, import uh, any other files that are in, that are needed for uh, for the operation of the main hmm? so just remember on the client side we use import on the server side we use require semantically they are the same but syntactically we know they are different uh, in this case uh, there are no problems in using import remember last week uh, import didn't work because we were loading the files from a from a file system and so uh, the file uh, uh, url schema it was is incompatible with uh, loading the modules right now we are loading some files the browser will load them from a web server which is our uh, localhost uh, column 3000 web server running express that will just serve the copy of the file it doesn't matter if they are on the same computer they are they have been transferred over http and therefore the browser will accept import statements uh, from files like this so uh, very easily, if you take the project uh, that we had last week uh, and you, you just publish that into a static folder in Express, you will be able to use import without changing any of the logic. Of course, here we are changing, we are designing everything. Okay, so uh, it's time probably to, to start uh, working on that and start working on the server side. Hmm? So I uh, started creating a, a, a simple project here no sorry is the other one okay i started to create a, a very simple project uh, with a server.js in the into a folder and uh, this is the, the skeleton for the um, the let me uh, zoom again uh, the skeleton for the, the the program and we see the server.js is containing uh, just probably a little bit the, the font size okay here we are uh, we are loading a normal express application so we are requiring express uh, and we're creating the application defining the port uh, and launching the web server here okay app dot listen uh, we are uh, installing some middleware uh, we already know morgan which is the logger we know express.json which is the json parser for the rest request body and uh, uh, which is pretty standard middleware and we are adding the static middleware here so we are saying that everything that is inside the client directory will be uh, returned as a static component and in particular we are also redirecting the slash so the main uh, home page uh, into the index.html file so it's a normal direct response uh, so basically all the client components uh, are just here uh, for developing the client we need to write the index main.js and whatever else inside the client directory and so this this server we start just giving the files to the browser and everything will happen will happen inside the browser so the server doesn't care at all 
what is inside uh, these files uh, as long as they are served to the browser mm -hmm. so we uh, this is jo our job for the next uh, week but from the server point of view we need to define the uh, the api the rest apis so the uh, the server side components uh, thinking about rest we first need to define which are the resources uh, that we are dealing with the resources will be uh, of course uh, um, courses and uh, uh, exams these are the two type uh, of resources maybe we will call a course and an exam and we also have a collection of courses and a collection of, ex of exams hmm? so these are the two types uh, of resources that we have in our very simple application that in this case they correspond quite uh, directly with the information that we have in the database and uh, with the content of the user interface hmm? so in simple applications we tend to have quite a direct mapping in some other cases not so simple and uh, what operations do we want to offer on these uh, resources so we want to offer an operation for uh, reading the list of courses for example so we have uh, uh, an endpoint for getting the list of courses uh, we may want to have information about a single course so get a single course from the collection of the courses slash uh, the course code hmm? course code let me write it like that it's just a comment then we want uh, probably to have uh, uh, the get for the list of exams sorry the next and maybe information about a specific exam exams uh, with the parameter of the exam id and finally so these are all the information that are able to uh, that allow the front end to read from our database the information that they need uh, and uh, finally there's the uh, operation which we want to add a new exam to the list so right now, right now the front end doesn't need to modify the list of courses so for the courses we just need to read them with a get uh, but uh, for the exams we need to add a new exam so adding something to a collection is implemented in rest as posting to the collection itself <coughs> and uh, these are the main uh, uh, apis that we want to implement uh, i'm not sure that the front end will need uh, these two uh, for sure they will need the the, the, the list uh, but we'll try to design them and see how we can implement them hmm? at least as an example then if this specific front end uh, will not use them mm, we don't care maybe another front end which is more maybe more advanced uh, may need uh, uh, all of them or maybe need some new ones that we are not thinking at uh, right at the moment okay so this is our plan hmm, for working and uh, how do we implement how do we implement them let's start from this one huh? it's probably one of the simplest uh, it's a get request so it's a simple app.get on the url called sorry on the path called courses slash courses and then we have our callback request response that does something and uh, what we need to do is uh, finally hmm, eventually it will be to re uh, respond with to fill the response with the json object uh, with the list of courses so basically that's the job of this uh, api hmm? return to the uh, client uh, the list of courses courses would be a javascript object that will be serialized in json and returned over http well of course uh, uh, we need to extract this list of courses because it's not it's not uh, um, uh, we are not working with uh, javascript collections anymore so we went to uh, we we need to read from database uh, all the courses okay uh, so we want to uh, execute a query a very simple one that could be uh, select uh, everything from 
courses that will give us uh, what course sorry the table name is course not courses hmm? so always <laughs> first suggestion for me by me is uh, always try your query in an interactive way on your uh, database before uh, committing that into the code hmm? so this is what the kind of information that we want of course we need to extract this from the database construct uh, um, javascript objects uh, and then we can return them to the caller okay so uh, for uh, doing this we need to learn how to query uh, the sqlite database hmm. uh, for the moment we are going to write the code directly here inside here uh, but uh, of course we will move to a, a better solution with separate files but let's start simple and then we try to organize our code better um, starting simple means uh, also uh, loading uh, the um, uh, SQLite uh, library require SQLite tree and opening a database database is uh, SQLite dot database and we need pro to provide the name of the file the name of the file from which uh, we want to load the, 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 the database uh, and right now I just created a simple one it's called exams.sqlite exams exam or exams oh it that yes yes exams.sqlite uh, we also have a callback function for possible errors and uh, so we can in that case just uh, log the error or or just throw the exception and close well, console.error error. if something is wrong uh, we just log it up to the console for the moment so we are not re you're not really dealing with the error we have just defined the callback for doing that this should be improved but right now we are just for the minimal uh, solution so we have this database connection we hope everything is okay and uh, uh, we can at this point uh, execute some queries so we want to execute this query here on our database so we can define a string uh, taken from oh sorry taken from this query copy and paste and then we can use the methods of the sql library sqlite library uh, for executing the query since we need all the results maybe the best way is to use the app dot oh, sorry database dot all method hmm? uh, all returns uh, all uh, the um, all the methods uh, also all the rows and the result set okay uh, and we can iterate over those results so we the signature for the all method is uh, uh, the first parameter is the, the 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 query to run and the second parameter is uh, uh, is not this one it's getting the, 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 the wrong uh, signature here, the wrong suggestion because it didn't understand that DB is a, is a, um, is a SQL uh, instance yet. No? So the, sometimes the suggestions can be misleading. Um, the other parameters, the second parameter uh, is a, a callback function. Hmm? A callback function with two parameters, if I remember well. One is a possible error that may happen in the query and the second is the um, the rows containing the result okay so this the this is the code that we want to execute here uh, okay so just remember just to be sure if you want uh, uh, sqlite db.all method so that we can see the example here db.all and db is the method returned by the connection 
uh, and uh, the b.all SQL and uh, uh, the um, callback uh, that processes all the rows okay so if an if the error is present then something is wrong otherwise we can uh, return it hmm? and so if we assume that everything goes uh, right so if error then we must do something uh, for uh, maybe like the example gives here throw an exception but otherwise uh, otherwise uh, we should process the rows and rows uh, is uh, an array containing all the rows of the database and every row contains the elements of the query so this rows object uh, will have uh, um, in this case uh, what's the database one two three six, eight, seven rows and every row is an object with three uh, properties code name and cfu we should uh, return an object like this hmm? and so uh, we can uh, uh, sim can we simply return the rows uh, to the to the color well probably yes or maybe we want to create the objects uh, in the way we like them so we can just uh, uh, define uh, courses hmm? uh, cost courses equal to uh, rows dot map and we are using the map function to map every row to uh, creating the array that we like uh, to an object and this object will have uh, maybe a code property taken from row dot code we may have uh, um, how it's called uh, uh, sorry here name that called from row dot name and uh, in this case we are just copying the property so it's a useless work but I wanted to write it because uh, so we can understand that we may uh, we need maybe uh, to um, to only change the names of some properties or extract only some of them. So we are constructing an array with the object that we like. Hmm? Uh, and the CFU property is uh, from row.cfu. And so we have this list of courses that we can simply return from this callback here. So here we are inside the callback of the db.all. So it makes the query. When the query is completed, it will call my function with the list of rows and uh, i will construct the courses object by iterating over these rows one row at a time constructing my object and returning the list of objects hmm? so this is something that uh, looks like uh, it should be working uh, we are brave people so we can try it uh, right now so we can try to run node server.js okay uh sqlite dot database it doesn't like it use a new operator okay so i forgot the new hmm. so new because it's a, it's a creator function of course Okay, this null is co probably coming from this error here. I didn't put an if statement, uh, so it's uh, coming out every every time. But uh, in this case, we say that it says that there are no no uh, problems. Uh, how can we sure that it's working? Well, we can pop up a browser and try to connect to our localhost uh, 3000. And uh, of course, the index.html doesn't exist yet, but we are not here for reading the index. We are here for reading the list of courses. Hmm? So something is working, something not, probably. Uh, we see that uh, uh, we have uh, uh, an array with null elements, so something went wrong. Let's try to understand what went wrong here. So the fact that we have seven results uh, means that we are really uh, iterating over the, the results. So there, there's something wrong. Uh, 
with the map probably hmm? so uh, row let's put a console.log of rows here just to see what we are doing okay let's try it again of course always null and uh, it's uh, it is uh, the, so the rows is actually working so there's something wrong in my uh, yes yes I'm still pick because if I want to return an object uh, I should enclose it in parentheses because otherwise it looks like the body of a function and so I need here to use commas to separate elements uh, of the objects okay and right now if i reload okay i see my my code my courses hmm? this is the what we actually returned because we have uh, mapped uh, the, the 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 array into uh, into one uh, one object and we serialize in json this object and the browser is only uh, helpful in trying to show us that we have an array with uh, uh, seven elements from zero to six and each element of the array is an object hmm? so this uh, is the actual result uh, of our first api um, of course in this case this object is the the courses object is very very similar is not ident if not identical to the rows object but was just for an exercise for showing how it's working hmm? and of course uh, uh, i'm ungrateful because <laughs> i found this error uh, this was my fault okay um so just to maybe have a, a, a bit more documentation if th this method uh, has a request uh, body which is empty because it's a get request so the get cannot have a body uh, uh, anyway in, in all the cases a request uh, a, re a response body instead is, a, is an array of objects uh, each describing a course a course uh, which is uh, here hmm? we define that the course is one of the rows that we have here, there so each object describes a single course hmm? and we don't expect to have any uh, uh, error message error returns values uh, uh, so that we are not uh, considering any error condition maybe there could be some database connection problems uh, but for the moment we are not returning any type of error hmm? uh, okay so this is the is the, um, the easy part and what if we want uh, to return uh, just uh, one course the information oh sorry before going to that uh, uh, this is a choice i chose a choice we made is to return full objects it's not the only possibility uh, we could have been uh, lazier probably and just decide that the courses uh, we contain only the IDs of the courses so all the codes const uh, courses so I'm commented the mapping and I, I'm changing the map map every course row sorry and I just return the row dot code and uh, in this case let me restart oh let's use nodmon so that it will restart automatically nodmon nod server okay uh, if i reload this right now i only get an array with the codes hmm? which is also possible hmm? the get doesn't specify the level of detail at which we want uh, uh, to return data so in this case we decided uh, to return an array of objects each describing a course but another alternative would be an array of objects an array of course codes that's it huh? it's a perfectly a perfectly valid uh, api for a get courses method get courses only returns the collection and so if we want just to return the identifiers of the collection elements like we did here just the code and we only get a, an array of codes it's valid 
if we want to attach more information to these identifiers and so uh, also provide the name in the CFU and returning objects like we did a moment ago is also acceptable it's a matter of design we decide uh, what is the level of detail what is the level of uh, granularity of, of the information that we are returning uh, it's a trade-off also if we want to probably return a very big data set it's better just to have the, um, the collection returning the IDs and then the application will ask uh, with uh, other calls uh, uh, all the details about the objects um, so we don't transfer a lot of data which may not be useful on the other hand uh, if we are sure that the application will need the data well maybe it's better to return that right away everything uh, instead of forcing the application to do many queries later on that will be heavier on the browser and heavier on the server side so we decide hmm? uh in the the rest api design is not a, a strict rule it's just a way of thinking a way of, of organizing your your information so you can decide uh, uh, maybe there's a middle way you return the ids and some inf important information and then only if the user wants uh, you can ask for more information hmm? it's a, it's a matter of design uh, so right now probably for our for the purpose of our application is better if we return uh, uh, everything right away so the first uh, so we take this as an alter sorry as an alternative that we are not taking here so let's keep this one and remove that uh, as an alternative different it's a different design of course uh, but it's perfect it's equally valid huh? so it depends on you that's why we need to write a couple of lines of documentation just to understand and uh, for other apis what happens with the course code for example well we reason more or less in the same way so we reason by um, for example app.get and we are using in this case uh, we can use uh, very fruitfully the parametric uh, uh, paths that uh, um, express offers us so courses slash colon code hmm? and then of course we have the uh, our callback function request response hmm? and we have all the the uh, the response method so in this case we know that uh, the const uh, the course code is inside uh, the request dot parameters dot code hmm? so we can extract the code that the user wants uh, from the request uh, slash course slash uh, one of these codes uh, maybe uh, tymov and uh, uh, this is the course of code that we need uh, to read at this point uh, uh, we need uh, of course to return again a json of the course information the course object like we did before in this case we are uh, only interested in one row of the database hmm? so we don't need uh, let's go back to the sqlite information we don't need uh, to uh, read all the elements query dot all the methods but we we just need the first row and it's just uh, database.get hmm? uh, get only returns the first row of a query so in this case we could uh, re uh, call the database saying i want to get the first right the first line of a query which is the query well let's write it first this query would be sql code is uh, select or oh, let's write in interactively from course where uh, code is equal to like takes one for example this one quotes the, nu the number and will give my me information about just this single um, course so this is the kind of uh, query i want to make here and of course it's not a query uh, bound to this specific course uh, but uh, this is a parameter that we that we'll need to change 
so i i insert a placeholder here by telling a sqlite here i have a parameter please fill it later taking from the values that i given you and so the get method as in this case two initial parameter one is the query and the other is the set of parameters is an array where all the uh, elements of this array will go and will be injected inside uh, this uh, question mark these placeholders right now we only have one placeholder so this array will contain only one element that is the code that we want to insert here which is actually the source code variable that we just defined there so these two parameters define a parametric sql query and we are defining also the actual value of the parameters in the array uh, in the former case we didn't need the array with the parameters because the query is not parametric it doesn't have any placeholder okay but of course even the db.all may have parameters and they are uh, uh, totally symmetrical okay and now we have the callback error possible error or row in this case row is singular because we don't uh, we are expecting to have only one row or zero rows it depends uh, so we may have an error for the moment we are not really handling that we are just communicating that somewhere else and then we go to the um, to the process of the row so it's possible that this row exists or it doesn't exist because the code may be wrong so if instead of this code I write something else the query will will not generate any error it's a perfectly valid query with a perfectly valid result composed of zero rows okay it's uh, nothing strange in the in the database world and what happens if we get uh, zero rows uh, as a result uh, the row argument is undefined this is what the documentation tells us uh, in case the result set is empty the row argument is undefined so we can check for that so if uh, row uh, is not is uh, remember that undefined is one of the false value values so if row is valid uh, okay we have the results course exists And in the other case, uh, course doesn't exist. So we must return different information in the two cases. Uh, in the first case, we can return uh, JSON, of course, serialization of an object that we can construct with a code taken from uh, row.code in this case we only have one one row so do, we don't need to map we don't need to iterate we have the name uh, taken from the row.name and we have the um, cfu taken from the row.cfu hmm? and this closes our our uh, get in the case the course doesn't exist uh, what should we return is that an error or not or well, it may not be an error probably uh, but we, not, we must signal that uh, to the caller so maybe we return an empty object for example hmm? or an empty array uh, that uh, on the front end it, it can detect uh, uh, the problem hmm? or we could also attach an error status uh, to the response maybe maybe a status uh, or not found for zero four Hmm? if we want to signal the error and then uh, maybe instead of the object we can write a message with the error code but i don't think it's mm, it, again it's a des design decision how do we wh what is the limit with between strange results and error conditions it's something that we decide maybe having no courses is a, is a valid result because maybe we are trying to check whether a course exists so it's not a real error it's just a missing data and checking for some data is not there uh, or in other cases uh, uh, we can treat that as an error because it should not happen so it depends uh, on how we interpreted that so if we save this and uh, of course uh, not mong is going to restart the application we can try if it's working so in this case we are uh, of course courses we return the full arrays we get this code we paste the code into the uh, url 
and uh, there's an error because course is not defined uh, at line 64 okay let's debug it line 64 of course uh, should not be there hmm? okay so let's try it again okay right now it's returning uh, the the response hmm? Uh, remember that the this method uh, rest.json does not exit the method does not get exit the method so this code here at the end was executed uh, anyway it's just modifying the the response object uh, to load it with a new content so but you can do a, or potentially do other operations afterwards hmm? okay so right now this uh, uh, is working if i try to ask for a method that is the, a course that is not uh, existing it will give me uh, an empty result uh, an empty object as a result and so the front-end way understand that so we document what we what we did and uh, so again the response body 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 video it contains a, a object describing course we have um, a parameter which is the course code hmm? and uh, a narrow condition which is if the course doesn't exist returns an empty object And so on. We just design uh, like this. Um, right now, we are. It's a, this code is a bit of a mess because you are mixing uh, HTTP with SQL, with JSON. Hmm? So everything is mixed in a single method. When methods will become more complex, when methods become more uh, when the queries also are more complex, the algorithms are more complex, uh, uh, maybe it's better not uh, uh, mixing the code so much. Okay, so I can show you, uh, I, I, we won't create it uh, together, I will just show you what's already been done, um, uh, how to reorganize this information. So for example, we can uh, delegate all the, info, all the operations on the database inside another class, uh, which is... Uh, designed specifically for interacting with the database uh, we are using a programming pattern which is very common uh, among uh, the, um, the database uh, programming which is called the dio dio so it's a this is a uh, dao let me call it dao class uh, or it's not a real class so it's a it's a module in this case uh, for accessing uh, courses and exams uh, what is the dao dao stands for data access object so an object which is specialized in accessing data so we try to encapsulate all the database operations inside this uh, dao object and so inside this dao i is uh, i try to insert all the database information so I, I'm publishing, at least I'm exporting a list of functions, a list of methods. So it will be DAO.LeadCourses, DAO.LeadCourse, DAO.LeadExam, and so on, that will do the actual queries. So that the server component, when it needs to read from the database, it doesn't need to manage the connection uh, with that. It doesn't need to manage the connection. It doesn't need to uh, write the queries and mix the queries here. It just needs to call one function for our DAO module. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we can refactor this code in this way. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me just for backup uh, uh, save this uh, as a server uh, with the database calls. Uh, so that we, we can save it in our project. Uh, but we are not using it anymore so we reopen the server the real server one no not this one this is the one okay so 
I, I already wrote this method, but they are not very different from what uh, uh, we, we wrote together. The only difference uh, is that uh, we are not going to mix uh, the analysis of the, of the SQL results uh, with the generation of the response. Uh, the query is an asynchronous operation. I'm sending the query now and later on I will receive a callback. If I'm isolating this into another procedure, then this function will need to accept a callback uh, by me uh, to, uh, to do the final computation, to do, to do the response generation, for example. Okay? So in this case, uh, these functions that we are defining that, uh, for example, query database and get the list of courses uh, are not simple functions, but they are asynchronous functions. And uh, we are wrapping uh, the SQL code uh, into a promise. So from this point up to here is exactly the same. Maybe I could uh, change some names uh, of the variables but uh, it's essentially the same code that we just wrote when we are wrapping this code into a function that should execute the query and only when the query is completed uh, should allow me to return from the http call hmm? because i'm waiting to return I'm inside the method here and send another callback that will wait for the uh, database to to complete and so at this point uh, what uh, uh, we can do is to return a promise so the list courses creates a promise that will be resolved when the query is completed so what we are doing the list courses we create a new promise the promise will contain so this is the body of the promise from here to there that contains all the database access creating the final array this const courses and then finally resolve the promise resolving the promise we remember means that returns the result of the promise and this result will be the array that we want so this array will be available in the then method of the promise itself hmm? so uh, we are just isolating the code and handling correctly the asynchronous behavior with the promise uh, all these functions are exactly the same. Uh, read course by code, of course, it receives a code parameter. It will create a query, and uh, but in any case, it will return a promise. Mm -hmm. And the promise will contain, if resolved, it will contain the, the result, which can be an empty one, can be uh, the real array, or can reject the promise by generating the error. Mm -hmm. And the same for, it's for list exams. Uh, and uh, and the same will be for create exams uh, which we'll uh, we'll examine in a moment hmm? so if we use this module which is called uh, uh, dao hmm, we can just simplify a lot our server because we don't need uh, to import uh, all of this we just need to so let's delete the database access uh, and uh, load the dao require DAO, .js. Hmm. and uh, right now when we need to uh, to read from the database we just throw everything away here and so let's delete all the alternatives we just ask the DAO object please uh, uh, list uh, uh, list courses hmm? so I'm calling this method that will return a promise and when the promise is uh, uh, resolved it can actually take the courses and return them And if there is any, any problem, so we have the then of the promise. We may also have the catch of the promise. 
sketch of the promise uh, where we can uh, uh, result uh, the status some error uh, 500 dot uh, and maybe we don't have anybody to to sorry it's the I should put it into a callback okay so this is much simpler the um, our API is just uh, I get uh, the information that I need I call the database method when the database method is completed I take the results and create the JSON and I return the request unless there are some errors in which case I will generate an error message so it's much simpler here I'm simpler there we are separating the concerns here we are seeing only SQL we don't care about Express we don't care about HTTP we don't care about REST it's just database access uh, on the DAO and on the server we don't care about databases we don't even know where the database is we just delegate to this DAO uh, the operations mm -hmm. so uh, if uh, if I'm lucky all the application is still working so the rest now the restart creates some problem uh, server 32 okay I miscounted of course the the braces so let me see this the brace here is closed there so I just need I'm list courses is the promise then is is there catch okay and so it's uh, closes here and this close the callback and so probably it just like that no okay this is here I don't need it anymore okay DAO.js is not found yes because it's looking for it in the node modules directory so I need to specify which it, that is in the same directory okay and now resolve the errors and we check whether the list of courses is still working yes it is hmm? so this is the new code uh, that returns still the same list of all the courses and we can do all these modifications also to the other uh, to the other parts uh, to the other uh, methods like for example this one for get uh, so let's try to avoid mistake <laughs> Like like uh, uh, before with the with the braces, uh, we just uh, have the course um, DAO. We get the uh, uh, list read course by code, where I give uh, to the DAO method uh, the parameter that I received. So it's the request dot parameters dot code, and then if uh, everything is okay then I can return the object that come from the from the DAO mm -hmm. so in this case uh, I take the course uh, information and they just return it uh, result uh, response dot uh, JSON of course otherwise we can return uh, so in, this works in both cases even when the course is empty because the DAO method returns an empty object and in the other case uh, we can do the same uh, clause with an error status yeah that's it hmm. and so all this code is not no longer needed okay And let's check uh, uh, if the server started correctly. Yes, and so we can uh, add some uh, new code. Oops, here. And it's working. Hmm? Okay, so for the last uh, uh, step is the implementation 
of the um, of the post methods we are skipping the get the exams for example because they are, they are actually the same uh, you will find them in the project that we publish on, on github but uh, the, the get exam is exactly identical to the course exam okay uh, so in both cases we are doing a, a promise based uh, code uh, the post is a bit uh, different uh, different because for the first time we need to modify the database and we need to do that uh, using some information that is coming from the client so for the first time we have a, a response a request body uh, that contains a, a object describing an exam so it has the fields that are uh, course code uh, score and date if i'm not wrong these are the three uh, course code date and score are the three fields describing the exam hmm? and uh, uh, the, uh, it will insert hmm, the, the the new object into the exam table the response body may be empty or in alternative it may be a number the new id for the inserted course hmm? so in some case you know that uh, when we create a new data the database will assign a new id it's a numerical value so if we want uh, since we have this information we could return it uh, to the to the browser if the browser maybe needs this, inf this uh, information uh, otherwise uh, uh, we just uh, if we don't fail if we are not returning any error then uh, it's uh, we know that the object succeeded and will, has, has been inserted into the database uh, another alternative that something uh, sometimes is done is to return a copy a full copy of the of the exam uh, this is uh, particularly when we are doing some sort of maybe validation of the data or for or normalization of the data in the object so we return the object being cleaned up uh, by the server so that we know that this object is exactly the same that has been stored into the database again it's, ma it's a matter of design we decide in turn de depending on the needs of the application which approach we want to take mm -hmm. and uh, we, we will discover if we study the rest apis uh, published by others uh, that there are many alternatives many ways uh, of, uh, of uh, doing that mm -hmm. and so uh, how to do that uh, again is not uh, difficult uh, application.post in this case we have a post method that we want to implement uh, that will listen on the exams path we don't have any uh, par path parameters and uh, we can uh, at this point uh, um, call the request response callback okay and at this point uh, we need uh, to extract uh, the information from the um, uh, from the body of the request that contains an object describing the synonymous since we have uh, loaded the middleware called express.json hmm, uh, we know that the body has already been parsed as a json content and uh, uh, we may uh, get uh, information directly from the re request dot body that will contain the properties that we want so it uh, will contain a course code for example we contain the other properties we contain a score we contain date as a property hmm. so we can simply hmm, take this information and call the function create exam create exam expects to receive an object with course code date and uh, sorry uh, yeah a course code date and score we will uh, analyze the function later on we'll uh, uh, what is expecting an exam uh, object with these uh, three three uh, fields course code date and score 
so we first need to decide whether the course code does have uh, the the underscore or not uh, um, maybe we leave it out uh, for consistency hmm? so in this case uh, we can call the DAO dot insert or create sorry create exam by passing an object uh, called uh, uh, with these three properties course code is uh, taken from re request body dot course code then we have uh, 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 score which is taken from um, score which is taken from uh, uh, request.body.score and finally we have the data taken from request.body.date uh, okay let's try to format this a bit okay um, so we are calling this create exam and if everything goes right we don't need to do anything special we can just close the request response.end so we are closing the the response without sending back anything in the body hmm? um, does it work uh, we can try it and uh, we are hmm, okay a bit uh, i'm a bit worried uh, on in the calling this uh, create exam that will write something to the database uh, uh, without first validating the data no? we'll see that in a moment um, the create exam function is just uh, is not mm, it's not much different from the other ones it's just another uh, access uh, uh, data access object uh, function in this case it will execute an insert into the exam table uh, with some values uh, the course code uh, the date uh, and the score we are calling the date function just to normalize it and to drop uh, the uh, hour minutes and second information that may be in this date object uh, so we don't know how the data is being uh, calculated but we want only to store the date and not the time so this is one of the sql uh, sqlite functions to do that and uh, the database function to execute is called run uh, because uh, uh, it doesn't it's not all or get because it doesn't, doesn't return a row or a set of rows but run will just execute the statement mm -hmm. so uh, the sql has three parameters one two and three placeholders uh, and so the parameter array has three elements uh, one two and three mm -hmm. i'm being a bit verbose here because i'm repeating the name of the properties but basically uh, i just to be clearer at what is happening right after that uh, will probably uh, also be faster we don't repeat all the properties anytime we just use the object hmm? but just for the first times is better uh, so when we resolve we don't need to return any any result we could uh, return the um, change uh, uh, sorry the the element id number so if we if you want to know how to return the the number of the the id of the element that was just created just look good there uh, so where's that it's one of the okay insert data is here in this table as i remember it was the next page and uh, you can use the last id product uh, this dot last id no also we mentioned that in the slides uh, so if we want uh, to return the code uh, we could resolve uh, this dot last id id with both capital letters right yes and so in this case we are returning the number of the the, the element that was just inserted into the database otherwise if we don't care we don't need to return it but in any case and uh, and so the server will just need to call this uh, uh, method so let's see everything is running how can we try the post hmm? uh, we cannot emulate the post from the browser i'm using this uh, uh, rest client extension or maybe you may use may you may use any other uh, rest uh, uh, programs 
uh, that will allow me to set the methods and uh, for example i just want to replicate this uh, rest query so i write the url here i specify the method and i click on send and this will run and you will see the header of the response and the content of the response okay we can also preview that as, a, as, a, as an object if i want to post we i can do that here and uh, of course the url will be exams let's check it twice exams okay and i need a pass an object with these elements inside so i need in this case to fill the body of the request with a valid json object uh, valid json is a very boring because we need to put quotes everywhere we need to select a valid course code uh, let's pick one here from from our first example okay then the score again in quotes otherwise the json parser will not be happy 27 and the date can be today 2020 04 21 that is our payload that we are sending with the post information and uh, we can try to send this post and then check again uh, the list of exams uh, whether it changed or not uh, what we need to also check uh, remember is that uh, we need to tell the server that this payload is encoded in json because it doesn't know what kind of body the request has uh, and so we need to set and this is we are a very easy shortcut a content type of application.json slash json so we are saying here in the request we are adding the content type header just to emulate if we don't write it then the uh, middleware uh, will not uh, parse the body and so we will not have the the properties ready so if i'm sending this uh, it's tell me telling me that uh, okay the response was 200 of course there was no response it's uh, it's empty because it didn't return any and we uh, probably should uh, be able to see that the new exam has been stored with uh, the date of today and the score of 27 actually we to do that we first need to implement uh, the other api of exams uh, but it's very easy we just have to copy they are all very similar uh list uh, exams and this will be just to be like that so you see that when i'm modifying this uh, i'm restarting the server but i know i'm not losing data probably uh, because uh, uh, the, mm, the all the data is stored into database so at this point if we want to get from the exams uh, we should probably see cross your fingers uh, no it didn't it wasn't added uh, get uh, yeah exams Oh, we only have two so there's a problem in the server somewhere mm, so we need to to check uh, where it uh, where we lost it hmm? okay let's uh well, we'll check it offline just not to make it uh, much longer but the idea is that uh, uh, we are calling this DAO with these uh, parameters uh, let's just maybe check console.log request body okay so that we see what happens when we do the post uh, again we need to add the authentication and uh, add the object uh, let's okay we need to paste it again it's a bit boring but we may copy one of them 
No, this is a cursor, so uh, get the exams. So these are information about the exams. Uh, yeah. I can copy one of them and try to modify it for posting a new score for this exam since I know I'm not doing any check. Uh, not 28, but it's 30 now. Okay, there's something wrong here. Unexpected. Mm. Of course, there's a comma here. This is not expected. Post exams. Okay, so this is what we received. Okay, so we did all this to check. Uh, course code, score and date uh, are the requested body. So the object request.body.course code, request.body.score and request.body.date are the actual uh, components of this uh, uh, element. So uh, uh, there, will, there should be some, some detail in the DAO which is uh, probably not working right now. Because if I try to do the get again, okay, it worked this time. So probably it was not just properly reloaded. And so we see that we have this uh, uh, course uh, that is present twice uh, also with the score 30. Hmm? So sorry for the mishap, uh, but what we saw is that the behavior of the post is more or less the same, especially the, it's, it's a bit more <laughs> difficult because we, the effect of the post is not directly visible, immediately visible. We need to reload the data and to check. Hmm? So these. Uh, are some very simple, very basic debug tools that may help you in uh, um, in doing that. Uh, the, la the last point that what I wanted to mention briefly in, uh, in five or ten minutes uh, uh, is the uh, validation of the data. Hmm? Uh, validating this data is essential because uh, uh, we don't know uh, what is in the request of body maybe some user inserted some not valid code uh, it forgot some data it misnamed some field or just added a lot of fields that are not useful or the course code is too long or is too short or the score is 35 or 88 or 12 which are not valid scores because valid scores go, go from 18 to uh, to 30 or 31 we count uh, the, the the honors and so on and the date should be in the right format uh, and so on so before before telling to the database please uh, execute this code uh, and insert this data into the database uh, we need uh, to validate them hmm? and validating them uh, is quite e easy in express uh, so uh, we are offering uh, over the internet an endpoint an api that everybody can call so if uh, they are just calling get methods they cannot do too much damage so because we are not modifying the database in any case so if they provide wrong uh, values wrong parameters they want they just won't get any result okay so uh, there's not there's not much to validate maybe in this case the code uh, we could check uh, before hitting the database whether the code is syntactically correct uh, if we really want but in the case of uh, methods that modify the database uh, they are more critical and uh, uh, in um, in express we can do it quite easily uh, i'm picking up some code that they prepared before so that we don't lose too much time in writing that uh, from uh, for another, another project uh, let me check it okay and uh, we are using a library called the express validator i mentioned that in it's mentioned in the slides uh, uh, the express validator gives you a, a check method and this check method uh, uh, is a very easy way of asking uh, this uh, plugin to uh, to do all sorts of checks uh, on your data and how, how we transform our uh, post method with the validator library uh, it's quite easy uh, basically we are using a feature of express where between the path and the callback we may have a, a, an intermediate parameter which is an array of middleware functions 
So uh, usually you can register mid-level function with the app.use syntax, but this will, ru will run on every request. If we want a middleware only to run on some specific request, like this one, we can just specify with an array as a second parameter uh, the middleware that we want to run, only for this specific request or for this path. And the check method uh, works as a middleware. And so we'll uh, analyze uh, the, the request, basically, and uh, do some sort of, uh, uh, of checks, like the name says. Uh, check as one parameter, which is the name of the field that we that you want to check. Hmm. So uh, it will uh, score. Uh, check will search for a score property in three places. It will check for a score property in the parameters, like sorry, like uh, like a parameters like this. So if uh, uh, we have uh, some parametric query, we can check uh, the value of the parameters. It will check uh, the, the presence of this property in the in the query. Remember result.query when you have something after the question mark in the query syntax. And it will check, of course, in the body of the request. So in this case, it will find probably the score property inside the request body that has been already processed by our uh, JSON client, expert.json. Uh, middleware so that was already applied and now we are applying the check here and the check will return a checking object to which uh, we can apply uh, several methods for example isInt uh, checks whether this um, pro uh, this property score is an integer number between a minimum of 18 and a maximum of 13 and the course code is a string uh, with a length uh, exactly equal to seven characters and so on okay so if you go and check the documentation of the Express Validator uh, library, you see that there are probably three pages uh, of methods uh, that we are able to check every aspect uh, of our validation. So instead of uh, writing your own regular expression or writing your own long series of if statements, if this is this, is this, and maybe miss something, you can just use these middlewares to pre-process your request uh, uh, with all sorts of checks, huh? of uh, syntactical checks, of course, that they, they can, they don't understand the meaning of the data, but they can check if syntactical is valid. And uh, if something is not valid, it will be stored into the request, and uh, the validation result function will extract from the request all the errors that you found. And so it will extract a, a, an, an array of errors, and uh, if you uh, want, uh, you can check this array. And if it's empty, you can refuse to execute the body. And uh, uh, on the other end, you can uh, return an error to the caller. Hmm? So it's a good practice. Every time you have to process some survey data, remember to validate it. Usually validation is a very, very boring operation. But in this case, we are using uh, this uh, express validation uh, library to make it much easier. So we, we just need to specify which are the criteria and then remember to check whether extracting the validation errors and check whether there is some validation error or not. If there are, we, we already have uh, even uh, an array of strings uh, containing the error messages to return to the client. So we really don't have too much work uh, too much overhead to to handle all these errors and uh, uh, and if everything's okay so we don't need to to return and to exit from this function then we can execute the query and uh, like, like we did before so this is exactly the same code that we had before uh, calling the DAO method and uh, cl closing the, the response uh, we also added here a catch method in the in case the insert fails for some reason uh, we also are returning a, 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 an error message so all the errors should be checked and should be returned to the client, to whoever called you, whether it's a, a test program or it's a, it's a, um, um, a real web application. Hmm? So at this point, uh, uh, when we put everything together here, uh, we have uh, uh, the server side of an application that encapsulates a database, a very simple database with a couple of tables, uh, and offers uh, some API endpoints. So it will offer um, a collection called exams uh, with a get method for the collection and a get method for the elements and also a post method for adding a new element 
and another collection called courses with a, um, a get method for the collection and a get method for each individual course and that's it basically and the, the post method will also try to validate uh, the data before trying to insert them into database there are some some check we are still not doing for example we are not checking for duplicate uh, uh, courses uh, for uh, uh, um, dates uh, that are uh, not too much in the past or not in the future but it, it's all details uh, that may be added uh, to make our api more robust so this closes the first half of our journey so that we have a server side a server that we can rely on to delegate all the functions uh, concerning our list of courses and our list of exams next time next week uh, we'll see how to attach the front end uh, to call these methods and create the the the, the application uh, i can anticipate that the front end at this point will be much easier because we already are very um, very good at creating the front end part so uh, the specific uh, course uh, will just be in a couple of points but all the rest is uh, creating the HTML and bootstrap uh, styles uh, and the event tenders that we, we already know how to do those. So it will be much, much shorter and much easier. But first, uh, it would, I, I just wanted with you to reason about how to design uh, the code. As you see, the final code is not very long. Okay. But uh, from my point of view, the important thing is to keep it clear, keep, keep the database access separate from the web server, actually, and uh, keep the validation explicit uh, wherever you need and uh, remember to document a bit what you are doing because otherwise all these gets and posts uh, gets, get lost uh, in, in a long list of methods uh, and so you you will not have any documentation for the front-end developer to know what they are calling and why hmm? so that's uh, probably something that should be also documented separately and also the first step to do design the api and then you can make, can implement them one by one and you see that there's a lo lot of cut, uh, cut, uh, cut and paste here copy and paste because all these apis more or less they are similar they are handling with different types of objects uh, handling with different types of queries but um, basically we are they are managing the same read and write operations on uh, elements and or collection okay thank you for the moment and we'll see you next week for the for the for the end of the exercise thank you